ah, there we go. See, we're all in this together. This is this is what we talked about previously, right? One world, one community. We're all here to help each other. Thank you for wow. that, Eric. <laughs> what a fail. Thanks, Eric. <laughs> All right, so this is the timeline of the hackathon. We are at the last workshop today on August 27th. Tomorrow is our networking session where if you don't have a team member or if you're looking to add more team members into your team, you can join in and explore the platform. We are using a very exciting platform, not Zoom. We are not going to throw you into random rooms, but we are using a very fun platform that you can join in and pitch your idea and probably find teammates. We have three time slots that you can pick and register for the registration link, check your email or Slack. And uh, the hackathon obviously begins on September 3rd and ends on September 5th by when you have to basically submit what you've built along with the pitch video. And we'll teach you how to make a better pitch video so that you can earn some points from judges for being able to pitch better. Along with that, we also have mentor hours through the first two days to help you with AstroDB and also help you with how you can go about building your idea into an app through the time frame of the hackathon mentors are already on slack so if you if you have any questions about astrodb or if you have any questions about your idea just reach out to them they all of them have data stacks in their display name so that's for the schedule and uh, i'll now move on to our panelist sean who's the developer community's lead at data stacks Eric, who's also joining in from Australia, he's, he also works at Datastax, he's a rock star. He's always there on Slack and every other platform that Datastax handles. And Savannah Mitra, who's the founder and CEO of 1 million by 1 million. Who, and uh, over to you, Sean, from here. And for the fire cha fireside chat, we have Asta from Angelac, who will take it over once Sean is done. Absolutely. Thank you for that introduction, Harish. Once again, I see a lot of new people have joined. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are in the world. Thank you for being uh, here with us today. Um, so we have a lot of information for you today. What's going to be most important is our special guest, Ramana Mitra. Uh, she's phenomenal. For those of you who have no idea who she is, look her up on LinkedIn. Look up the company One Million by One Million. It is a fantastic um, avenue to learn. It is a fantastic company to work with, and it is absolutely a stepping stone to the next phase of your career. So for those of you who are not familiar, please, please make sure you do your research. And the reason why I say it like that is because you will want to take part in this. Okay. Even if you don't win the hackathon, you will want to take part in this, this uh, incubator program, uh, this startup challenge. You could have an idea and with the proper guidance and learning and training, your idea could turn into your next venture, your future, okay? So that said, let's move on to the actual Astra pieces because I don't want to take too much of the information away from Sermana who is going to teach us all about everything later. So as everybody knows, AstraDB is basically Apache Cassandra as a service, right? It was built by Datastax for the cloud. And the whole point about it is to try and make your lives easier. OK, traditionally, uh, Apache Cassandra was always known as um, a really scalable database, but quite difficult to set up. That's the piece that we've taken away. And how do I know? Because signing up for AstroDB in five clicks, you can have your own database up running and your data loaded to perform your first um, queries. OK, I'm going to show everybody that I'm not lying in a little bit. I'm going to show a quick five minute demo because it is that simple. So as a part of this, Eric, would you like to chime in? What are some of these tools and why are they important for the people who are going to be participating in this event? So most important one. So if you've never used them Cassandra before, um, and, and really if, if you're, um, you know, you haven't written any apps on Cassandra, Stargate, um, the data platform API, provides you um, the REST APIs, Graph, uh, GraphQL API, and the JSON doc APIs which allows you to connect to a Cassandra cluster using um, APIs that you're already familiar with. Super important because most of the developers have already used RESTful APIs. Um, GraphQL is the flavor of the month. So um, you can get started with building your apps um, you know, without needing to understand Cassandra. Um, CQLA SH is the tool that you use to connect to um, Cassandra directly. So you can work with um, the tables um, directly. 
The Datastax bulk loader is um, what you use for, so that you can load uh, CSV data. So for example, if you've got an existing relational, relational database, um, you can just export your data into CSV format and then upload it to Astra. Um, it also takes a JSON file format. And of course, we've got the metrics dashboard so you can quickly check the health of your cluster. Awesome, awesome. Next slide, please. So a lot of people ask us, how do I learn? What can I do to become a Cassandra professional? So there's a couple of different methods that we can provide with you. Uh, one of them is gonna be datastacks.com slash dev. Um, for those of you who have been here before, you probably heard us mention that a lot. They have different scenarios where you can literally get some hands-on experience without having to go through eight hours of classroom training. Two other avenues are you can either do a uh, condensed what is Apache Cassandra from a developer pr perspective on our um, Developer Advocate YouTube channel. It's called Intro to Cassandra for Developers. Or you can follow along with the entire full eight-part Apache Cassandra learning series. Now, if you're going to follow along with the uh, full on learning series, this is going to be where you can obtain a free certification voucher worth 150 bucks. Now, that said, if you have any questions, Harish already mentioned it, there are Datastax coaches and mentors in the Slack channels everywhere. Please post any and all questions. We would be more than happy to help you. Next slide, please. Because it's all about everybody participating in this event. Now, after we've all signed up to Astra, right? Um, there's a lot of things that are there to help you. First of all, I already said within five clicks, you'll be up and running, but there's also a so-called sample apps gallery available to everyone right on your dashboard. Okay. Now that sample apps gallery, if you click on it, there's going to be multiple different kinds of sample apps for you to use. The most popular ones we actually covered in previous sessions, how to build a Netflix clone and how to build a TikTok clone. Now, why am I mentioning those specifically? Because those are usually the most fun ones that people like to try because they're relevant, you know, they're actual to things that are going on in the world today. You can also build Battle Stacks, which is a great um, game for students. I will say this, uh, you know, upfront, it's a great game for students and families who can play together in a really fun and exciting manner. So with the sample apps, you have some guidance on what potentially you could deploy on Astra. One thing, don't use one of the sample apps as your submission for the hackathon. I know this might sound like, no, nah, nobody would do that, but I promise you, I had somebody <laughs> two months ago in my previous hackathon who literally submitted the Netflix clone as their hackathon submission. I have to commend them on their audacity of doing that, but unfortunately we cannot give a winning prize to somebody who copied our code, all right? So just make sure you don't do that. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so, what does this mean? You have an idea for an app, now what? Harish, could I take over the screen for one minute? Or well, I should say for five clicks, so to speak. So everybody here is familiar with the Build a Modern Data App website. So I said you can get started in five clicks. I'm gonna add one extra one, a six one, because I'm gonna start on an external location. From our Modern Data App, we're gonna scroll down to our AstroDB registration button. I'm gonna click on it. It's gonna open up our AstroDB uh, login page. Because I'm lazy and I don't like to type, I'm going to log in with my Google, right? You can log in with your uh, name and email if you want, or GitHub or Google. It is up to you. But because, like I said, I'm lazy, I don't want to type, I'm going to just use Google. Now, as you can see here, this is your dashboard. So we've seen two clicks so far, right? Two clicks. From your dashboard, you see that you get $25, and this is a monthly budget. Now, $25, most people are like, well, that doesn't sound like a lot. But if we equate it to actual reads and writes, this equals to about 4 million reads and about a one and a half million writes and give or take 40 gigabytes of storage. So you can you know, quite easily do a lot of fun things for yourself with all of the free tier. Now, third click is coming up. I'm going to create my database. And from here, I'm going to do angel hack demo one. So I'm going to use my database and my key space name to be the same thing. Now, most of you are probably seeing the stuff on the uh, bottom and thinking like, oh, I got choices. Yes, you do. We have the top three major cloud providers and you can choose whomever you want. I'm going to choose Google Asia Pacific. Why? Because most of our people are actually from India. So I'm going to deploy in India. Okay. 
create my database. Now, while that's creating in the background, right, we can see that it's actually pending right now. So it's being started up. Let me show you the two remaining clicks that you need. Or actually, let me rephrase that. Let me show you the sample apps first, and I'll show you the two remaining clicks after it is up and running. So the sample apps gallery, as we just saw, it will provide you with a couple of different features, and you can look at all of these yourself. Um, I always say the best one to start with if you're if you're brand new to Astra is using the Netflix clone. Why? If I click on here and view it in GitHub, it is literally going to take 10 minutes. You can have your very own Netflix clone in 10 minutes. That's why it's so cool. And that's why I get super jazzed and excited to share this with people because nobody believes me when I say five clicks to get your database up, 10 minutes to get your Netflix up. So within 15 minutes, you will not only have your Astra database, you will have a Netflix clone and you can actually work. For those of you who still doubt me, our friend Harish here actually made a video. Um, Harish comes from a relational database background. He decided to challenge the timing and was like, okay, let's see if it's actually that way. He made a video and it took 15 minutes, you know, including some breathing and talking time. We have to take that into account. It took 15 minutes for him to set up Astra and to build a Netflix clone by himself. That video is available on Slack as well as the YouTube channel created by Angel Hacks or Angel Hack, not Hacks. Now going through the objectives here, you will see exactly what you need to do um, it will help you with the prerequisites. What are the things that you need to install? For example, we, we use Netlify. It's, uh, it'll help with, with your deployment. We wanted to make sure we created an Azure DB instance. In here, we can see what, it's look, what it looks like when we are actually live. We create a security token so we can connect directly. We learn how to generate your tables with GraphQL for pagination. And we actually populate some information into the database. So all of these things, they shouldn't be very hard. They're quite clear in what is expected and how it's going to work. And it should help everybody be able to do things successfully. Now, while I was talking, our database is now actively up and running. So I'm gonna um, indicate the final two clicks that we need to finish our AstraDB deployment. Number one, let's connect. Here you can choose from a different, a couple of different APIs like Eric was telling us, the document API, GraphQL API, and REST API. However, if you don't want to use an API, we have drivers and we have SDKs, and you could even use some external tools if you prefer. Now, for those of you who are very observant, let's click on GraphQL. You can see that my key space name has already been included into the code you can see everything that we do is already included into code. This is meant to make your life easier, frictionless, right? So after we've decided on how to connect, the next phase is going to be loading your data. Click on load data. I can literally upload a data set here. As soon as that data has been uploaded, I am now ready to go. My, da my dashboard is going to be uh, populated with some information. You'll see that reads and writes will start to go up because we're, we're actually doing some writes. And when we click on connect, to give you an example, CQL console will connect it directly from your dashboard to your Astra DB instance. So you can already start querying. Now, I'm going to, uh, I'm just going to do a describe key spaces just to show you that the key space we created is actually live. So we are able to do everything immediately. All right. So I'm going to hand it back to Harish because the part of Astra demo is all done. That's how simple it is. Everybody can do it. And to indicate how everybody can do it, we have a couple of teenagers participating in this hackathon who have successfully been able to create their own applications already. So not to shame anybody, this is to praise the fact that these teenagers are taking the initiative. They can do it means you can do it. All right, so that brings us to the next phase, right? So what do you do after the, after the hackathon? What is next? That's where this incubator uh, program comes into play, this startup challenge that we're running with 1 million by 1 million, which allows us to introduce our guest, uh, Shramana Mitra. Shramana is the founder and CEO of 1 million by 1 million. She is a very, uh, very interesting case, or a very interesting person to investigate. Um, she actually went to a very prestigious school, very close to where I live, MIT, Go Engineers, Nerd Pride. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, I get super excited. Why? Because MIT was actually the first hackers of the world. 
For those of you who don't know about it, read about the first hackers of the world at MIT and what they did. It was absolutely phenomenal. Um, I won't ruin the surprise, but suffice it to say, it was really amazing. It made a splash. Next slide, please. <clears throat> so the incubator program or the startup challenge that we're trying to run uh, together with uh, 1 million by 1 million is meant to help people who have an idea to learn, to get training, to get guidance and mature from an idea to an app to a potential startup. Now, why do I keep saying potential startup? Because we can't just assume that being a part of this program gives us access to money. That's not how the world works. Your idea needs to be mature enough and your, your concept of what your startup is going to be needs to be mature enough before people will invest in your idea. Next slide, please. So that's what this program is about, to help you learn, to help you mature, to help your idea become something more. And that's why we say who can join this program. We have opened it up to all developers, entrepreneurs, and idea people of the world. We want to make sure that anybody and everybody has the chance to participate in this program. There are only two caveats. One, you must use a form of Cassandra, whether that's Apache Cassandra, um, DataStax Enterprise, or AstroDB, it doesn't matter to us. It has to be one of those. The second one is you have to be serious about your commitment. Now, why do we say you have to be serious about your commitment? Because it is not, this program is not meant to just be like, oh, I'm going to sign up and then I'm going to do nothing about it. That's wasting your time. That's wasting your potential, right? Be serious. If you want to become a startup, you want to take your own destiny into your hands, that's where you want to join this program. Next slide, please. <laughs> so there are a couple of different areas that you can go to. Right? We have three separate uh, QR codes here. Um, the reason why we have QR codes this week is because I realized that the past couple of weeks, I kept making hyperlinks, forgetting that nobody here in the chat can actually click on said hyperlink because you don't have the actual deck. So that was my bad. This is how I'm going to make up for it. The blog is the blog that I uh, wrote to launch the partnership between 1 million uh, by 1 million and Datastacks. The second one is the actual landing page where you can learn more about the program, which is going to be on the 1 million by 1 million website. And the third one, and this is the crucial one that I want to emphasize here. The third one is the Eventbrite page where you can sign off for the kickoff roundtable. Now, for those of you who are wondering why that would be important, one, it's free. So obviously it's, it's going to be awesome. But the reason why it's important is because the kickoff roundtable is going to be uh, Shamana is going to be hosting, and she's going to have as her guests um, Chet Kapoor, who is our CEO and chairman of DataStacks, along with Ed Enough, who is basically our chief of product. And they're going to have a fantastic talk about all of these possibilities. Now, that is the kickoff to a six week program. So this is why it's so crucial for everybody to participate in the round table, because that is where you learn what is Cassandra, how it can help you, what is 1 million by 1 million, how we're trying to help startups, how we're trying to create a frictionless experience and showcase to people you don't need to be a Forbes 100 company to do something special. Next slide, please. <laughs> so how does it actually tie in to the hackathon, right? Um, we heard earlier from Asta and from Harish that there are tie-ins that we can have automatic placement with the one caveat, your application must qualify. We're not going to just give you $10,000 uh, stipend plus a year free usage of Astra if your application is not that kind of application, okay? Now, that said, even if you don't win this hackathon, you can still participate in the incubator program. Why? Because your idea might not be strong enough right now but with the proper training that Shimana and her company provide, uh, some wonderful Udemy courses, you can mature your idea into something more, okay? So your project startup potential, that's going to be crucial. Um, basically, any participant in the hackathon who wants to continue developing after the hackathon itself is done, you get training, you get guidance, you get super, super valuable tips, tricks, and uh, helpful learning courses that even if you don't pursue a startup um, program, you can still basically expand your, your tool set or your, you know, your, your knowledge base as you proceed as a person. It can be a jumping off point for a life-changing course correction in your life, right? Imagine you have an idea, 
right? You're uh, you're the next Facebook, and you're still in college, or you're you're a young a developer or entrepreneur who's working for a company, but you really want to work something by yourself. This is your chance to jump into something special. This is where it comes down to: Do you take charge of your own life and you know determine your own destiny, or do you let fate dictate how your life is going to turn out? Right? Because that's the crucial part. Fate dictates; destiny can be created. Now, from all of that, we want to make sure that you use this hackathon for one fun, two networking, three to change your future. Next slide, please. So after the hackathon, what's next? Once again, sign up for the round table. Even if you're not gonna participate in the event, I highly recommend the round table because there's gonna be so much valuable information shared there. It is, it's gonna change your life regardless, all right? Now, the scholarship application is uh, on the pages that we just shared with you. There's gonna be a link to there. You can apply for the scholarship. It actually explains what the scholarship is, how much uh, you know stipend you get, what comes with it in terms of services and stuff like that. And it will also help put you into our nurture program where we provide you with all of the information needed to proceed on your journey. Now, you can continue to work on your app to help you mature. We have training paths to help you. And the one thing that I want to finish this presentation with, and this is something that is a very personal message from me to everybody who is here, who's going to be watching this. If I can even motivate one person with this sentence, I, I hope it resonates, is be passionate about your pursuits, right? Believe in yourself. Because if you are passionate about what you're going to do, that is going to continue to be fuel to drive you forward, even during difficult times. The second piece is to be bold, right? Believe in yourself. You might not be perfect. You might, well, you're definitely not perfect. Nobody is, but your idea might not be perfect or completely ready at this time, but that doesn't mean it can't be with the proper guidance. So be bold, take a chance on yourself, believe in your idea, do the work. Okay. And I guarantee you that you will change your life for the better. All right. Next slide, please. So with that, I would like to hand it back off to my uh, friend and colleague, Asta. Asta, please take it away. And thank you, everybody, for your time. Thank you so much, Sean, for that session. I think all our participants got a lot of insight about the Data Stacks Incubator Program, along with 1M by 1M. I think this was a mystery for all the participants. So, you know, we cracked the mystery today. So with that, let me welcome Sharmana Mitra, founder and CEO of 1 Million by 1 Million. Thank you so much, Sharmana, for joining us today. For all those of you who have just joined in, uh, Sharmana, it's actually pretty early in the morning for Sharmana, and she is still taking time out to get up. Uh, yeah, I woke up at 5.30 in the morning, took a uh, shower, and I thought, should I wear a hoodie to that today to, you know, resonate with my developer audience? <laughs> and I didn't. <laughs> Thank you so much for doing this for us, Romana. So uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, Sean and Harish both have introduced Romana, but uh, just a quick introduction for the ones who are just joining us. Romana is the founder and CEO of One Million by One Million. In 2015, uh, LinkedIn named Sharmana as their top 10 influencers along with Bill Gates and Richard Manson. And I hear from Sean that it has changed to the top two influencers uh, on LinkedIn. So yeah, I mean, yeah, amazing, amazing, just amazing. All right, so with that, uh, we start our fireside chat with Sharmana today. So uh, we have some questions for you, Sharmana, and probably this is uh, all our participants, those developers out there, they have these things in mind, so probably I'm just resonating their voice to you. So uh, to begin with, uh, the first and foremost thing that came into my mind uh, when I was you know, thinking about these questions was what inspired you to entrepreneurship in the first place? So let me tell you a bit of my story um, and you will resonate with that because you're all kind of nerds, right? I come from a 100% you know, hardcore nerdy background. I have a computer science bachelor's, I have a computer science master's from MIT, and I was in the computer science PhD program building really hardcore, you know, computer architecture systems. You know, we were building it at that time. I'm talking about 1993, 94 timeframe. I was uh, on a project at MIT called Alewife. And Alewife was one of the two first multiprocessor 
computers to you know to be designed in the world now of course it's this is all you know standard fair table stakes but uh, at the time so i'm dating myself i i just turned 50 so uh <laughs> i'm not that young anymore but uh but i have gone through the same kind of journey of really deeply enjoying computer science deeply enjoying programming and systems system design and all of these things that you are you all I'm sure enjoy very much and, and I think it's one of the most elegant things when you write a piece of code that is really elegant and simple and resolves without bugs it's one of the most fascinating experiences in the world so um, I do not have an MBA by the way I uh, started my first company while I was a graduate student at MIT and one day literally the internet happened to us 1994, I was in my office at uh, Tech Square in MIT and I had two office mates. We were all three of us were on the Yale Wife Project under Professor Anand Agarwal, who now runs edX actually. Um, and, and one of my office mates, Ken, just turned and said, hey, Shramana, have you seen Mosaic yet? And I'm like, what's Mosaic? And literally the world changed. Mosaic is the precursor to Netscape. Mosaic is the browser that was first developed at uh, University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. Um, Mark Andreessen originally was on the Mosaic project. That's how Netscape happened. And, and then, you know, one day to the next, I decided basically that I was going to finish my master's, but I was not going to stay for the PhD. I was going to go do my entrepreneurial journey. So uh, I, uh, you know, I went and, and started my I actually started my first company while I was still at MIT, and then I went to do that full time after I finished my master's. And then through the 90s, I started one company after another. I started three companies in the next six years as founder CEO with no MBA, no business training, nothing. I learned everything on the job and I was traveling constantly, raising money constantly. I raised a lot of financing and you know, built a lot of products, sold constantly, and, and basically got really exhausted. By the end of the <laughs> decade, I was exhausted. So you know, I, the only job at that point, the only job I'd had was a founder CEO of software companies kind of jobs. So then I was an, uh, I was an entrepreneur in residence at NEA. By this time, by the way, I moved to Silicon Valley. In 96, I moved to Silicon Valley. Now I live in Silicon Valley in Menlo Park, California, which is like the heart of Silicon Valley where, uh, you know, um, the street that I'm off is basically Sand Hill Road, which is the heart of Silicon Valley's venture capital industry. Um, so anyway, I moved to Silicon Valley and um, I, you know, I did most of my entrepreneurial career actually with the, in Silicon Valley. So NEA was one of my investors, New Enterprise Associates, one of the largest venture firms in the industry. They were one of my investors. So I uh, was doing an entrepreneur in residence after doing three startups in a very compressed time frame. You know, our careers, the people if, of my generation who went through the dot-com bubble in the late 90s, we, our careers were incredibly accelerated. If you played that game, you could have really accelerated careers. And this is a message that I want to give to you. You have to play to win. You can't sit on the sidelines and win, right? I have won because I took all these risks very early in my career. And by the time I hit 30, I had run three companies. And all I was was a, was a computer scientist. So any of you can do the same thing, but you have to play to win. So anyway, I was in, in 2000, I, I was an EIR at NEA and NEA expected me to start another company, <laughs> but I did not have the energy to do that. I was exhausted. So I was getting also, because I knew everybody, by this time I, you know, Silicon Valley is a small community. Once you've broken in, I broke in through, by the way, the MIT alumni network. And that's one of the reasons why I started 1 million by 1 million, coming back to your question. It is Silicon Valley during those days was, and still to an extent is, it has improved, but it still is hard to crack. You know, the industry, the inner circle of the industry 
It's hard to crack, it's hard to get into. I cracked it by using the MIT alumni network. But I imagine, you know, the hundreds of thousands of developers who are, you know, working on Cassandra or working on the NoSQL, uh, you know, universe, you haven't all gone to MIT or Stanford or whatever, and you don't have those inner circle in, inside tracks. This is why I created 1 million by 1 million. There were several things that I thought we could do with 1 million by 1 million, which was not done in the industry. One was to provide an inside track into a world that I had access to, and I still have access to, and that access has magnified many folds because now I am quite influential, as you heard. So <laughs> I can get you into a lot of people that you cannot get into on your own. So access was a big, big reason. Knowledge was the second one. One thing I started doing, I don't know, maybe some of you know my blog. My blog has been around for a long time. I started writing my blog in 2005, but nobody's right, nobody was writing technology blogs. There were just a handful of us. Dharmesh Shah, who went on to find HubSpot, was one of them. Um, Om Malik, who went on to do Giga Om, was one of them. And Om actually got me writing. Uh, he knew I wrote well. And he's like, Shumana, you're so opinionated. You should start a blog. I'm like, what is a blog? So that's how the blog started in 2005. And you know, it became very popular very early because it is a really great blog. And one of the things I started doing on the blog, and we still continue to do that after 16 years, is invite people to tell their stories of how they have done it. As a result, we have these entrepreneur journey series where you know hundreds of people who have built unicorn companies, you know, 500 people who have built venture funded companies, another 500 people who have built successful bootstrap businesses. You guys from India, you must have heard of Sridhar Vembu. In 2007, this guy, unknown guy, nobody wrote about him, nobody knew about him, shows up in my living room in Menlo Park. His name was Sridhar Vembu. And he told me a story. I'm like, my God, your story is fascinating. Why is nobody interested in this? He said, nobody wants to hear it. So if you go back and look, on my Forbes column, at the time I was writing a Forbes column, I wrote the story, The Smartest Unknown Indian Entrepreneur, and that was the story. That was how the world discovered Sridhar Vembu. Sridhar Vembu now has built Zoho to almost a billion dollars in revenue without a single penny of outside financing. So, um, so I think, you know, I've always believed that people who are really smart, technical people can be taught business. And today, the 1 million, 1, million, 1 million by 1 million program is very well fleshed out because we've had all these you know, thousands of entrepreneurs who have participated in our case study program. And we've developed a full methodology of how to build a startup from scratch. And we can teach you every step of this process, basically. And that includes this very bootstrapping focused methodology, which gives you a lot more control over your journey. So you have to be successful. You have to first survive before you can succeed. So you have to learn how to survive that very, very high infant entrepreneur mortality phase of entrepreneurship, which is the zero to one million phase. And that is the mission of one million by one million to get a million entrepreneurs get to million dollars in annual revenue and beyond. So our biggest success story is another actually company that started in India, Freshworks, Girish Matrubutam, is an alumni of Zoho who came to pitch me in 2011, almost immediately after I launched 1 million by 1 million at the end of 2010. Um, I was doing a tour, in, in, we were doing a partnership with Microsoft, similar kind of partnership with Microsoft. And Microsoft had me come to India and you know, do a bunch of stuff with them. And Girish came to pitch me there. And then Girish joined the 1 million by 1 million program. He was in 1 million by 1 million for three years. We helped him raise his first round of financing from Excel, negotiate the term sheet and so on and so forth. Today, this company has raised almost 500 million in um, financing, has had huge success revenue wise and is very close to going public in uh, so, 
you know, we've, however, I'm just as proud of the, the numerous entrepreneurs we have coached and mentored and, and accelerated, incubated and accelerated to becoming very successful bootstrap companies. So we are very big believers in bootstrapping. So this is another philosophical element that I want you to take away from this session. One million by one million is an inclusive accelerator. This is what I really wanted to achieve with one million by one million. Venture capital is a highly exclusive phenomenon. If you look at all these big brands in a acceleration, startup acceleration, the Y Combinators, the tech stars, they all take pride in their rejection rates. Jeff Ralston, the president of Y Combinator, just a few weeks ago was at our round table as my guest. And I was teasing Jeff. I've known Jeff, Jeff for 20 years. I was teasing Jeff. He's like, Jeff, you guys take pride in having a 97% rejection rate and 1 million by 1 million is a 0% rejection rate. We accept everybody. And Jeff is Jeff like burst out laughing and he says, no, our rejection rate is 98%. So I'm like, okay, well, I rest my case. My point is everybody can become a successful entrepreneur if you do, if you follow the right steps. One of them, for example, there are many steps and I'm gonna teach you all of that in due course. If you, if you decide that you want to learn from me, I can teach you all of these things. But one thing that you must learn is that do not go out chasing investors out of the gate. You have to chase customers first before you chase investors. You have to solve a problem that customers are willing to pay for. This is really, really core to the methodology. So don't read TechCrunch and think that how to raise money is your path to entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship equals customers, revenues, and profits. Financing is optional, exit is optional. So. So Asta, coming back to your question, why did I start 1 million by 1 million? Because I really believe there are, you know, millions of people out there who are highly intelligent, technically savvy people who with the right guidance can become successful entrepreneurs. They, maybe some of them will be bootstrapped entrepreneurs, some of them will be venture funded entrepreneurs, some of them will build unicorns. I don't think we're gonna build a million unicorns. So that's unrealistic, that is not gonna happen. But can we build a million sustainable businesses with customers, revenues and profits? Absolutely. And I can guarantee you, if you follow the 1 million by 1 million methodology, you will get there. I can guarantee you, you'll get there. If you have resilience, if you work on it, if you stay with it, you can do it. But you have to, as I said, you have to play to win and that's, what I think Sean is encouraging you to do is, is to play. You have to take the first step. Thank you so much, Aman. I think that was really, really inspiring. Some of those stories which we have heard of but never knew actually uh, resonated from 1 million by 1 million. I'm mean, glad we could have some insights around that. So uh, my next question is actually a follow-up to uh, you know, some of the things that you were talking about. And in fact, uh, though Sean has uh, given us a detailed insight on what Data Stacks Incubator program along with 1 million by 1 million is, but uh, probably from your, uh, you know, uh, if you could give us an overview around that and specifically on those key highlights that the participants could, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably they could uh, watch for when they go, as they go ahead in this incubator program. Yeah, right. So. Um... I'm going to say that Data Stacks is going to hand out a finite number of scholarships as part of the 1M, 1M by 1M Data Stacks challenge that is coming up. So you should definitely apply for that. But I want you to think of the journey as a holistic journey. So you're all in front of a computer. We are all in front of a computer. So I would like you to go to 1M by 1M.com. And uh, Sean, I don't know if you can put up the Udemy uh, courses link, page link. Yes, so 1 by 1 and if you just do a search on Udemy methodology, 
in the blog. So go to the blog and then uh, Sean might be able to give you the link also. But I just want you to kind of, I'm going to walk you through this page. So go to the Udemy page. Um, there we go. You have the, the link. So this, the page is called Udemy courses based on the one and by one in methodology. And I want you to spend the next eight weeks until your application for the startup challenge due. I want you to kind of start immersing yourselves already in the one and by one in methodology. And then your application is going to be a lot stronger and you will also have used the next eight weeks really productively. So you will see the first set of courses on that page are bootstrapping courses. And there are some very specific bootstrapping methodology elements that we have discovered. And everything here is supported by case studies. So Bootstrap First, Raise Money Later is a great course that ju does just that, is explain the, the philosophy of Bootstrap First and then Raise Money Later. And the, the way I kind of you know, facetiously put it is do not go to VCs as beggars, go as kings. And this is a very important mantra. This is the one million by one million mantra. We do not send you as beggars. If you go as beggars, the rejection rate is very high. So we want to maximize your probability of being able to raise money if you decide to raise money. Another concept that we have learned, which is very worthwhile for all of you to investigate because you are developers and most likely you have a job. Do not quit that job. Almost every single accelerator out there is gonna tell you that they don't accept you unless you're doing your startup full time. I don't believe in that. One million by one million works constantly with entrepreneurs who are bootstrapping with a paycheck. Data Stacks itself was founded in a bootstrapping with a paycheck mode. It's a case study we teach because I met the founders of Data Stacks a long time ago and did this case study as one of the signals that I got from the market is like, oh, wow, bootstrapping with a paycheck. We need to develop methodology around this. So now we have lots of case studies and, and this whole bootstrapping with a paycheck course on Udemy is taught with, um, you know, case studies. Another methodology we teach, and again, it's a controversial one that the venture capital industry resists, which is bootstrapping a startup with services. Services companies do a great job with kind of having cash right from the beginning and then turning a services capability into products. We have case study after case study. Oracle did it this way. You may have heard of Alteryx. We teach the Alteryx case study. It's a public company now, multi-billion dollar public company, also bootstrapping using services. And we have numerous other case studies of this phenomenon. The other one that everybody pushes back against is solo entrepreneurs. We believe in solo entrepreneurs. Everything starts solo, service now. Fred Luddy came to pitch me in 1999, first time. Fred Luddy was a, was a solo entrepreneur who built ServiceNow. ServiceNow is one of the biggest success stories that industry has ever seen. So don't buy into any of this crap that people will tell you. You can bootstrap with a paycheck, you can bootstrap using services, you can bootstrap as a solo entrepreneur, and then you can bootstrap first, raise money later. So that's the bootstrapping packet. I suggest you know you do all of these courses and get yourselves lined up. There's going to be more courses coming on this. There are like two that we're working on right now. By the way, this is all our work from the summer. All of the one million by one million methodology is available as one M by one M basic, which is a you know subscription program. You have access to our entire curriculum. And then if you join the one M by one M premium program, which is what the scholarship that Data Stacks is offering to that is also curriculum included. But I'm just giving you something where you can very affordably, very quickly start getting into the one M by one M methodology through these Udemy courses. That's why I'm kind of taking you through the methodology, uh, you know, step by step. So the two that we're working on, and it's going to be released uh, in the next month, are bootstrapping by piggybacking. 
So you ride on somebody else's platform. Salesforce, a lot of companies have been spawned on the Salesforce platform. A lot of companies, I mean, Viva is a case study that we teach, was born on the salesforce.com platform and many others. Uh, we're also working on bootstrapping to exit. There's a lot of bootstrapping to exit going on right now. So you could build something and get acquired without ever raising a penny or raising a very little amount of maybe angel capital. I have had companies in the one and by one program that we have sold um, to other larger companies that I have relationships with. So we will offer you a bootstrapping to exit course and new course. Um, the next body of courses that I want you to look at is how investors think. Just like you're looking at product market fit, you know, to, to build a company, you have to achieve product market fit. But think about to raise money, you also have to pay attention to investor entrepreneur fit. Just like product market fit, it's an equally important question, investor entrepreneur fit. How investors think is something you have to understand. The micro VC world, you know, the, the, the phase of very early stage investment, the world of micro VCs is now flushed with capital, but it is also very segmented. There is pre-seed, seed, post-seed, pre-series A, small series A, you know, traditional series A. There's like a whole lot of terminology you have to understand, a whole lot of mental process that you have to understand. So the how investors think packet of courses do just that is take you into the minds of those investors. These are all conversations with investors that you're going to, you know, and, and it's like the who's who of the industry. So it's, you know, get, get those courses done and you'll be much further along in your journey on how you play your hand. And, you know, one of the big advantages of one and by one in premium is the mentoring. So, I will be mentoring you through your journey. If you are part of one and by one and premium, if you win, for example, the data stack scholarship, you will be part of one and by one and premium. And I will be working with you on a week by week by week basis. So you'll get a flavor of that at the round table that is coming up that Sean just asked you to register for. So, um, so definitely, you know, go for, go for understanding as much as possible in the next six to eight weeks and then apply for the scholarship. And hopefully you're going to come into one and by one in premium and I'll have a chance to actually directly work with you. So this, I hope, gives you a you know, view into one million by one million and dig around on the website. You guys are developers. You can go study a website. The website is very comprehensive. I think that's a lot of detailing, uh, Shermana. I'm sure our participants are like, pumped up to actually go to the website and see a lot of details around that. And you actually answered my second, uh, the follow-up question that I had in mind, because that's one thing that all the participants and probably anybody who has got a good idea, right? And, and they want to know how to pitch it to a, a probably investors yes. would be. So I think one thing that I have at least embedded in my mind is don't go as beggars, go as kings, because you Absolutely. own the idea. Yeah. And all right. So in See, fundability is an important concept that you have to understand. Are you fundable? Before you go to an investor, you have to be fundable. And I'm not going to send you to any investor. I have the network of you know, over 500 investors that work with 1 million by 1 million. If I sit down in front of my computer for half an hour, I can introduce you to 30 investors in 30 minutes. The time it takes is for me to type the email and, and you know, customize the email and that's done. But I'm not going to do that until you are ready with all the ducks lined up. So if you go to the one and by one website, there's a self-assessment. These are all the due diligence questions. In Udemy, there's a free course on VC due diligence questions from one million by one million. These are you know, questions that you're going to have to answer. And I want to make sure you can answer these questions before I send you to them. Otherwise, you're going to be in that you know, high rejection pile, and I don't want you to be there. So, so you're absolutely right that there's, you know, we have to get you there. And, and that's one of the big, you know, value propositions of 1 million by 1 million is we will get you there. Absolutely, Sarmana. And in the interest of time, I would probably, uh, you know, have my last question for you. 
Uh, this is coming back to the hackathon. I'm sure you must have seen our uh, website. So build a modern data app, or uh, like Harish was mentioning, is a three-day hackathon that is happening next week. And the idea behind that, the theme actually is to build your next unicorn. So that's the theme and we have kept the challenges open. The reason being, we actually want people to think free and you know get to the next level. So that's the idea. So with that, and I'm sure you must have uh, read about it, what are a few success mantras that you would want to give to the participants uh, to, I won't say win the hackathon because that's not the ultimate goal, but take something out of the hackathon for sure. Well, um, you have to solve a customer problem. You know, technical people have a bad rap in our industry. We have this reputation of building solutions looking for problems. Please don't do that. You have to solve a problem, a customer problem. You have to position your product to solve a problem. This is one of the things we do very rigorously in One Million by One Million. We have a lot of curriculum in the program on how we do this is positioning. Positioning, you know, I spent after uh, three startups, remember I told you I was really exhausted and I needed to take a break. I was getting a lot of job offers and I did a lot of consulting for 10 years. I consulted with about 80 companies, including large companies. And the money I made was really in positioning because people don't understand positioning. Positioning is really hard. Positioning is one of the most complex things that you're gonna be doing. And that's something that I'm gonna teach you in this journey is how to position something so that you can achieve product market fit. Technology alone is not gonna help you achieve product market fit. You will have to position your technology to solve a problem and that's how you productize. And that is one of the most sophisticated disciplines in the startup world. You have to learn that. Any company that has achieved unicorn status has achieved a really tight, sharp positioning. It's not by boiling the ocean that you achieve sharp positioning. It's as tight, as narrow, at the same time, as big a scope. And that includes pricing, that includes you know, partnerships, API, like whole discipline around it that you have to think through. And, but I'm very sure that I can teach you that. So if you're willing to learn, if you're willing to put in the work, it's like a gym membership. Just by joining a gym, you're not gonna lose weight, right? You're not gonna get in shape. You have to use the machines, you have to do the workouts, then you're gonna learn and then you're gonna get in shape. It's the same concept. One million by one million is exactly the same concept. You have to study, you have to work, you have to be resilient, you have to stay with it. And it will take years to build a successful company. Now on unicorns, if you, if you're, if you have your heart set on building a unicorn, remember you have to go to, from zero to hundred million dollars in five to seven years. That is the unicorn trajectory. And that is a very, very difficult path. So, there are best practices around that. that we, we do have a unicorn course on, uh, I mean, uh, yes, we have a unicorn course on Udemy as well. Um, I think it's about 2025 20, unicorn entrepreneurs that I uh, put in that course. There are conversations, dialogues, there are lessons from the trenches and so on and so forth. So you're very welcome to do that and you know, layer on my perspective with their perspective. And again, you will learn a lot. The bottom line is, though, you're going to have to get the positioning right. You've got to get the product market fit right for a high velocity trajectory. Thank you so much, Romana, for that. I think I'm sure all the participants must be really, really excited getting all these details and inspired because we have our hackathon coming up next week and all the participants are ready to ideate and go into the next phase. So. Thank you so much, Romana, for taking time out and chatting with us today. Looking forward, uh, you know, I, I'm sure the participants are looking forward to connecting with uh, the 1M by 1M data stacks challenge as well. Thank you. Uh, with that, I would like to thank all the panelists, uh, Sean, Eric, and Romana, and obviously Harish for hosting the first part of it. And before we go, uh, there are some key uh, and important things that we would like our participants to know. So Harish, if you could, uh, Move to the next slide, please. 
in the meantime, um, guys, if you have any questions, I don't see any questions in the chat, but if you still have any questions, you can post it to our uh, Slack channel and any of the mentors or the admin, uh, you know, organizing team members will uh, connect with you. So last, last few tips before we actually move into the hackathon phase. First and foremost uh, is if you already haven't joined Slack or the Telegram group, please do that immediately. This is your time. We just have one week to go before the hackathon starts. And if you already haven't signed up for your AstraDB platform, do that because that's the key on, uh, you know, uh, to get onto the leaderboard and get some cool swag. Uh, you can also look at our repo resources and see, uh, you know, you can learn as about AstraDB and then uh, come into and, you know, create some amazing solutions for the hackathon. And once you've done with step two and four, you automatically get a place in the leaderboard. Next slide, please. And yes, now it's the time to form your teams and start hacking since we just have almost a week to go. How do you do that in case you still haven't found your team member? You can look up uh, into our free agents directory in our uh, participants guide. And if you're too lazy to do that, don't worry. Uh, tomorrow is our networking session. We have three sessions for you. Like Harish mentioned, it's not all the, the same old Zoom, uh, you know, boring session where we uh, throw you in uh, different breakout sessions. It's gonna be a gamified version of uh, something that you've never seen before. I was talking to uh, Sean earlier and I remember we were thinking about some old games, probably some Super Mario and stuff like that. So we would all welcome you to the networking session. The uh, link to it is there on Slack for registration and the registrations are closing 12 p.m. Uh, GMT plus 5.30. So please hurry up and register for that. And then we are looking forward to seeing you uh, and build some amazing, amazing ideas next week in our hackathon itself. So with that, I think it's time to sign off. Thank you again, panelists and all the attendees for joining in. Have a lovely, lovely day ahead. Good luck with the hackathon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. That was amazing. Thank you. I was getting so many private messages. Awesome stuff. Thank you so much, Harish. All right. See you guys later.